Mets are actually both sitting at zero points right now. So it's actually almost guaranteed that these two guys are going to go into the loser's bracket since this is the final round, the final week of our Swiss format stuff. So the maximum number of points they can get is two by winning this series. But who is going to be the bottom seed and who is going to be the second to last seed? That is going to be the important question to ask as we hop in and introduce the players and find out exactly the answer to that question. Spawning up here in the top left-hand corner of the map, we have the pink Zerg player. Give it up. Slot the Esports Club's Bio Ice. Bio Ice. Bio Ice. And on the bottom right hand corner of the map, it is our Red Terran player, Buster. Not repping that AV, uh, AIVNA anymore. Unless it yeah, just man. didn't show up. Maybe, maybe he just doesn't rep it anymore. Maybe he maybe got kicked he out. He just doesn't. So he got kicked out. <laughs> he played a game that wasn't mech, and uh, that's actually against the rules. <laughs> he tried Instant the clan. Did you, them. back in like the Brood War days, or even like early StarCraft 2 days, uh, before you like Infinity 7, all that other stuff, like, mm -hmm. were there any like weird rules for like clans that you were in? Uh, I don't think I had any ones like that. Like, uh, mm. yeah. not, not like you had to I play a particular play style or anything, but I'm like, yeah. But you have to like do things like you have to have like a certain thing tag in front of your name and all that stuff. <laughs> like, uh, I'm trying to think. I really feel like I was, I can't even like make one up. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. I remember one of mine when I was like playing Brood War, whenever I would, and I would like mostly just play an FFA on like, not, I, I wouldn't even be able to tell the difference between BGH, like big game hunters, and the hunters. Mm -hmm. Like, because my economy never got good enough to tell the difference yeah uh, like i wouldn't even <laughs> yeah. mine out on things but i always have to open up every game with like some shout out to my clan and stuff oh man oh okay Hot oh. Damn. early six slings really early six slings and buster is actually gonna scout this out with the early scv that's gonna allow him to just say you know what keep this reaper at home i know you're yeah. gonna try and go for the snipe off on things exactly and uh, you already see it just waiting for those links to get over here and uh, Biowise is going to be able to see it with an Overlord, but I think he might have went a little bit too far forward. Uh, he should be able to get it back to that high ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the Link shouldn't be able to do too much here. This is where the command center finishes, and you lift it up and get high ground vision of that area. And mm -hmm. then float it back down, losing That's out like on probably level. more. Yo, worth probably it. losing out on more economy by losing that extra SCV you could have made, but... <laughs> It's definitely worth it, man. Come on, Bio. No, come on, It's Bio. the psychological damage, man. Yeah, because when you, you lose that Overlord early on, oh, you don't know how much it hurts in like, player, right? Like, It does, honestly. But okay, I, I just wanted SCV. to quit the game right there. Like, I'll even just be yeah. like, you know what? I don't even want to play. Go full Let's Idra, man. Crushed. Well, uh, SCV makes its way into the main base of Bio. It scouts out and sees, oh, no drones mining gas. I don't have to worry about all kinds of weird bailing busts and oddities roach ravager all ends etc it's just really not quite possible without that uh an extra of course gas being mined <laughs> now technically there could have been like lings being pulled up inside the main base or something but he also saw some of the saturation at the natural and he's going to move in with a reaper potentially confirm that third base pretty soon as well yep and get a little scout there oh gets even a nice little uh reaper or uh, grenade going down but mm -hmm. i guess he's going to keep it alive i mean speed is finished so I, I don't think this is one of the maps where you can utilize clips mm -hmm. that much, but I don't even know if there are any lings on the map. So Oh, wow. Actually, uh, Bioice with the ling run by to the natural was able to get a couple of workers killed off. Now, there was that one scouting worker that died, but four mm -hmm. workers killed total means that those lings, just a handful of lings that eventually get killed off with Hellions, six lings killing off three workers this early on in the game was a huge win for Bioice. Oh, yeah, that's actually really good. So even though he wasn't able to kill the Reaper with them, I'd rather be able to get three workers there. And even almost killed a mule. That could be running around. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it wasn't even mining. No. Is 18 Ling's going to be out pretty soon. He's sitting on just 40 workers. Uh, is he planning to do anything else? I mean, it's going to be a little while until we find out because he did just get supply blocked by the pole Viking. But Jeez. this may just be to help deal with the Hellions. He may actually be looking to try and get a bit aggressive, though. Yeah, I was wondering if he was too, right? Like, that's a lot of links uh, to see uh, out of BioWise at this point in the in, in the game. Uh, I don't think he was able to really scout the main, so he did see the buildings, but uh, 
He does not know about like any upgrades. He doesn't know about any additional buildings, I don't think. Maybe he did see two barracks. No, he still only sees one barracks, but he did see it researching. Mm -hmm. so at least he knows that stim should be on the way. Um, but it's hard to know if even the third command center was being, you know, was even made. Because it could be yeah. somewhere. And Buster also, I think, thrown a little bit off his game and his game plan just because of the way that this game sort of opened up with the Lings moving in really early on, getting some good damage done. He made these Hellions and hasn't really been able to push across the map, which really does hurt him because Biolice able to get the creep spread out in multiple different directions right now, especially with seven Queens out on the map. His creep spread is actually going to be really, really solid this game, it seems. Yeah. I think uh, without these Hellions being out on the map and kind of asserting their map dominance, right? Usually you think that the Hellions are going to be able to have that map control. Nope, the Queens are basically uh, going to reign supreme here. And then without a third base on the way, we know that it is going to be some kind of an all-in. Uh, it is a plus one. I don't see an armory here. Ooh. And... Well, there's the armory. Will this work? Can hmm. this... I don't know. You know, with the armor coming down, I almost would like to see more Hellions coming out. Oh, he is putting it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There we go. Hellions coming down or are coming out as well. So he'll have a handful of Hellbats to join in with this attack. But Bailing Nest is on the way. And I think the Bailing Nest is going to finish up in time to maybe make like a few Bailings just a little bit after the Hellbats finally morph in. But with the Creed spread, Creed spread is going to be the thing that buys time for Biowise before this attack gets into the base. For sure. And the fact that uh, Biowise is going on to autopilot, he's drawn up to 66. So if there's any opportunity for Buster to take advantage of a situation, it would definitely be this uh, right now. So we're going to see if this build uh, is going to be strong enough. It has combat shield, it has stim, it even has plus one with it too. So Biowise yeah, doesn't really have a lot of army supply. He does have queens though, so it is well, really up to the timing here and how much he can get done before these bailings are done. 24 banelings is a lot. I mean, this is actually almost one baneling per marine. Yep. So as long as they literally get some splash damage done on any units, this is going to be a very solid cleanup. But, you know, a lot of the lanes have been taken out. The bailings starting to get focus fired down, but the medevac goes down, and this is going to be the cleanup. Bioice holds and has a stellar economy behind it. Yeah, I mean, when you drone up to 60 against the two base Terran and you take a fourth base, and you delay your uh, bailing nest for a long time, and then hold it. I, I I don't know what else to say, man. Like Buster, yeah, he has no more momentum here, and Biowise knows that all he needs to do is hang on. But and remember that this is good. a uh, see that a match to determine a bit of seeding, and with both players sitting at zero points, it's not about winning one game. It's you have to win the series. Take those two points and have better seating than your opponent because uh, these two guys are the bottom of the uh, 12 players right now. It's kind of unavoidable, but oh, Medivac goes down. Bios just seems like he's in complete control of this game. Oh, yeah. He's at 74 drones. And even though Buster took another command center, he wasn't making SEVs through it all. So mm -hmm. it looks like it was a macro build. Doesn't seem like it's going to be like as effective as one because he stopped at about 44 workers and instead of taking this base and already having like a good amount of mining at it it's going to be about 10 scvs it looks like Whoa. but his Drop other of the natural is going to catch by a bit off guard he's not losing too many workers over here he's lost a few but uh still sitting at a pretty healthy number it really is just going to be about can he actually get up enough links in a really really awkward spot with his hellbats are going to be just shredding through them with a the hellbat attack yeah this is actually really decent here uh, Got a good amount of mining disruption. I don't know how many workers he ended up killing, but I mean, so far so good. He's already killed about 14 in total. And stemming up on these queens on the top right-hand corner of the map, the medevac is going to be able to survive. But it's taking some damage over here. So Buster's finding some opportunities to do something. Uh, it's no longer quite as dominating as it was earlier on, but he has been bleeding out a lot. He doesn't even have more medevacs on the way right now. He's two liberators, and he's got one medevac in the top right with five marines. That is actually the only thing that can heal up these units when they stem. Yep. He's lost so many medevacs, right? Uh, six have already gone down in total. So that's kind of a big number, right? Um, to not be able to save them at all. It's going to be so hard because uh, he does need to spend a bit of his gas to get tanks out if he's going to be trying to deal with Hydra Bane. 
he's still working on his upgrades, so at least those are already on the way. Um, yeah. But also, I don't like know. I, I hate to criticize players and stuff, but I do also feel you know Buster banking up a lot of resources for a while. He does finally uh, start sending everything out. He's oh, he's dealing with the bailing attack. Does actually have a really solid cleanup of that, but. He stims up half of his army and the medevac production. I mean, the starboard production, I would say, is just like there's been a lot of idle time. And I I think that it may partially be because he's trying to get out as many bio units as possible and everything. But the medevacs are going to be so important when you just you don't have medevacs. You have no sustainability to your attacks. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, it's so hard to really uh, stay, have any staying presence uh, and just be able to freely stem without feeling like everyone is going to be costing you just uh i mean the life fa the life factor of it is more you know uh detrimental to you than just that extra dps so okay liberator attack trying to get some damage done uh, just kill off a few more workers so yeah get something done and pulls the army very in position i i would have loved if that liberator timed out with the army moving out as well so you could pull the army back and then do some extra damage and clean up some of the crease stretch. Just kind of buy some space for himself. But now it seems like Biowise already has his entire army at the front. He's making 20 more bailings, going up to 40. So, you know, once again, that's almost, what, one bailing per two, like one and a half Marines? Yeah. Not really good if you are the Terran player, that's for sure. Now, this is a pretty good position out of Buster, and there's no uh, flank being made just yet by Biowise. I mean, I, I think a flank would be a mate, but uh, he might be going for that or just wait for it to, to hit his creep. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to play it out a little bit patiently, just sitting back with his army of Hydras and Banelings. Has to be a little bit careful. The the, the Siege Tank spread is actually pretty nice, and it, Buster has had some pretty good focus fire, sniping off Banelings left and right, despite the fact that Bios just makes so many of them, uh, which is probably the reason why he still wins these engagements. Mm -hmm. Buster's handled them in kind of traded somewhat cost efficiently it's just his economy has been so in the gutter compared to bioisis yeah it's just i mean really right uh, even though he took that third base and he did have it it's just that bioisis was getting his fourth during that push right right the initial push mm -hmm. and then was already on like a really really awesome drone count so yeah it looked all right but it's just the fact that bioisis was just miles ahead here and already getting look you can even see him being able to afford all of those upgrades too uh, you know, it wasn't only just like a 2-2. Mm. He ended up getting the other attack upgrade, too. So, um, yeah, he goes into Hive. I guess he's going to skip a little bit on the ranged upgrades and just focus on melee and getting Ultras out. And I think once the Ultras do come out, uh, I, I don't know if Buster's going to be able to hold on, man. It's going to be pretty ugly, I think. Yeah, he is at least going to have his own plus three weapons finish up by the time Kindness Plating finishes, so... There are some saving graces, and he killed off the top right-hand base. He's shutting down a bit of that economy. Bioice's next base up on the line. Well, as a some Ling run by does yep. do some more damage and on the Bioice for you. A huge yeah, run but... by, and he gets another about twenty oh. workers. Okay, well, uh, Bioice does force Buster back, but that hatchery is pretty low. So you know what? I will say, if Buster can push in there, kill off that hatchery, get like a drop to the bottom left, kill off that hatchery. This game suddenly looks really, really different. Biowise would then be on a three base situation, only one base really mining. There is hope for Buster, but it has to come with a good engagement and killing off this hatchery. Yo, what a sick uh, set of blinding clouds out of Biowise. And he's going to get right on top of the army and he's just going to barrel on through. Biowise takes game number one. After a really, really good hold, and then basically just um, not letting go after that. And, and I love it. Bioice and run buys kind of are synonymous, right? Um, yeah. He is <laughs> a man that loves his run buys and harassment. I mean, back in Heart of the Swarm days, he used to be known for his two base muta play just because it allowed him to put on that mm -hmm. pressure and allow him to also do a lot of the Ling run buys. But you get ready to hop into game number two. Bioice already looking really, really strong. And Buster, I will say, he's shown moments of, I guess, this. Uh, potential to do something really great yeah but he hasn't quite been able to capitalize on them fully and that's really what i want to see as we hop into game number two indeed and here we are on ascension to ire in the top left hand corner the pink zerg player from sloth gaming esports club it is <laughs> biowise sloth gaming esports club i know right now. is it usually sloth esports club <laughs> I give it a little bit more there, right? 
Yeah. And down here in the bottom right, we have the Red Terran player. We're going to bust into the scene. Give it up for Buster. Hey. You ain't no Buster. Don't bust my chops on that one, man. I wouldn't. How could I do such a thing, brother? How could I? That's true. The only thing that you do is bust a rhyme. Yeah. Hot damn. I like. Well, why do you think that Bioice is named Bioice? I don't know. I've actually thought of that before, too, and I think I asked, and then uh, no one ever gave me, like, maybe I should ask him himself. That might be a smart idea. Maybe it's because his... His play and his Ling run by has put the bio on ice and hey. kills everything. <laughs> God damn it. This is why I didn't want to even try because I knew there was no <laughs> possible way. <laughs> well, he did stop that tr pushing his tracks. <laughs> it's true. I, I think I missed the pun on that one. I don't know. Like, froze, stopped tracks? it. I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. Fro yeah, that's true. I like that one. I like it. See? That's Froze it in its man. tracks. Boom. I have no idea. It's, oh, I didn't try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm I'm obsessed with dad jokes. I'm a, I'm a fan of dad, dad jokes. Yeah, I just got to get better at them. You know? I just want to... I want to have you like a whole... You know what? Person. A really great way to do it? What? Just Hang start out. tweeting them. Yeah, I know you do just in mass. Like, <laughs> just sit down and just say, I'm going to come up with 10 dad jokes and I'm not leaving until I do. And then you just do it up. Yeah. And then you just do it up. And surprisingly enough, I have still gained followers. Yeah. Despite everyone saying they're going to unfollow me, I still gain followers. I, yeah, yeah, I see you people. That's right. Because you can. Yeah. Judgers. You don't got to listen. Don't let them bring you down, Fear Dragon. Dad Dragon. Dad Dragon. Fear Dragon. I don't know. <laughs> oh but man, Reaper getting really low on health. Uh, Look at him. Bioice doing a good job pushing that back. And this was off of a hatch first and everything. So uh, the Reaper generally wants to at least force out a spore crawler or something, but zero resources lost because no buildings made or anything. This has just been a perfect defense from Bioice. Yep. Uh, you didn't take any Roach real damage Warren, and already a roach warren around the uh yeah three minute 20 market would be or three minute 20 second market should be finishing around and this means that he's probably going to be getting incredibly aggressive with it it's not at the front to try to wall off um but it's only off of one gas so i think it's when you go for like a big roach push but then you actually drone up behind it uh you know yeah oh, five i think second. he's only gonna make five or six hey he might even make seven but Tempo, one of the most important things ever <laughs> is that Buster's spray on the SCV was on cooldown. That means he used an offensive spray somewhere. I don't even see it. Yeah, where did he put it? It must be on the maps. Uh... Yeah, man, I have no idea. He put it down somewhere, though. <laughs> yeah, I wish people used that more. I, I know, like, now that people have the cheese one. <laughs> GG. Okay, so I was completely wrong. He's actually going up to, like, Ooh. 20, man. Yeah, Ling run by also snags an SCV. It almost makes its way into the main base, but scouts out everything he needs to. He sees the tech lab on the starport. He knows Banshees are going to be coming, and that's actually going to give him an opportunity to maybe make a couple of Ravagers right before he really tries to bust in too far, even though he just sees that there's not a complete wall in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, yeah, he gets a second gas here, so I think we might even see the Ravagers like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, before when he was on one gas, I was thinking, I'm like, ah, you can't really do a very strong road push when you're only on one. Like, you can get a few out, but there's really not a lot of uh, damage to Ooh. be. There's not much to be that afraid of, oh. but here we go. Okay, well, Banshee's actually not going to focus fire down the Ravagers that are morphing, which I, I would love to see. And okay, now he's going to start doing it. Roach is starting to bust their way on in, trying to take out that bunker, trying to take out the SCVs that are trying to repair the bunker now. And Bio oh, has already my. done a lot of damage, but is it enough right now? He's only even on workers, but has he broken Buster? Yo, Buster doesn't really have a lot that can deal with Roaches. Uh, the Banshee is the MVP right now. Stim is about halfway done, and there's really not a lot of bio to take advantage of it. Oh, he's holding his ramp, though. Oh, this the repair really on that supply depot is taking out those Lings and those Roaches. The Banshee's putting in work, and he's going to lose all these depots, but Bioice is forced back. Yep. And that was a really good hold from Buster. He did lose 18 workers, but 
I mean, that's better than dying, right? So. And it's going to be about the fact that uh, Cloak is finished up. We have two Banshees out, third Banshee on the way. And Biowise has nothing back at home to defend, really. He's got two Queens and two Spore Callers being made now. But the two Queens, not one Queen per base is not enough to really cover all the angles Banshees can attack from. No. And even the third base is going to be under fire with no uh, way to really... Oh, no. Oh, Buster's going to get fully surrounded here. Yeah, one Banshee coming back home to help defend, but he's going to be losing so many workers. He has to almost end the game with the Banshees. No, the Banshees are returning home. No, oh. no, Buster. You need to move across the map with those. You need to do counter damage. Yeah, he's flying on over. He's going to try to get something done okay. here. I mean, yeah. his best bet might be to just try to take out the third. Biowice has had enough time to get Spore Crawlers up. He even has a lair, so he is getting an oh. Overseer. Cloak isn't really going to surprise him. Yeah, and I think the third base is the best thing that he can go for. Unless he were to be like Masa and just like have the best Banshee mi micro. Uh -huh. Being able to snipe off like a good amount of workers too. I don't even know if he'll be able to get the third though. Okay, he's got to start I stutter stepping this down to the south side of the hatchery. Overseer's there. Oh no, one Banshee goes down the, oh. the higher energy bell, uh, Banshee as well. And the third yeah, is going to be able to complete. He's gone. <laughs> That's, I can't believe it. That's a huge deal. There wasn't even enough for a transfuse there. Oh, Buster, he had some nice positions in this game. He had held off against the aggression. He had the Banshees alive, ready to do damage. Biowice moves in with a surprise counterattack, gets a full surround, shuts down Buster's uh, economy for a little bit, and then shuts down the Banshee harassment. Yep. So Biowice feeling pretty good about life. He's going into Spire, and Buster is going into Bio, so he is going to at least have uh, the capability of shooting up. He's going to have engineering base, so he is going to be able to make turrets easily, but I don't think he knows about it. And if he just goes right into, like, basic tank production and trying to deal with roaches, then this might get a little bit weird. But I think the auto turret is just out of range of that spire. Hmm. Yeah, it's just not quite going to be able to do too much over here. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah, he doesn't really scout out the spire, but, you know, he, he did see that the third base is pretty late. It's kind of weird because your opponent also went for an all-in. So does he have a really good read on the game? Does he have that game sense? Uh, well, it, seem, it seems like the answer is probably no at this point as the missile charts are still not going up. No, right? I mean, it's not that often you would expect there to be a Muta to come out after that. Mm -hmm. um, that quickly. You're usually thinking like Roach Ravager and Fester, but he never was able to see the Roach Warren upgrading or anything like that. And now... His Banshee's in the middle of the map, uh, fighting Queens. It's going to die because he's so focused oh. on the Mutas and there's nothing. He needs to move faster, Dio, because, I mean, even though there's no turret, you can still, uh, does he have Stim? Yeah, you can still at least uh, push these Mutas away. Oh, the Mutas able to get some significant oh, no. damage on. Oh, even goes after that Medivac. Oh, God, BioS, he used to play two-base Muta all the time, so his Muta control and his Muta harassment, his positional play with them is actually really on point, and he knows exactly how many marines he can engage against oh, he God. knows how many scvs he can pick off yep bio ice really getting good value out of these meters 39 workers buster is down to and luckily for him there is a turret but is he quick on this one oh well, actually ice. not even losing his meters over there he takes a lot of damage but he kills off even more workers the splash damage on those glaive worm bounces from the refinery trying to pick off some more of those scvs but even just getting that low is going to be annoying for buster to deal with and behind this the important thing is bioice still spending that money on more mutas he's getting upgrades he's getting out more drones is building up a little bit of a mineral bank but uh i assume it's mostly just going to be so he can uh, get out some more drones and get out some more units well i mean it's basically going to be a uh, ling bane muta now the roach warren mm -hmm. was targeted down a little bit ago but i don't think bioice has any real intention of going for roaches anymore and the problem for Buster is that he is going to be going for tanks. So if he was expecting there to be like Hydra Bane or Roach Ravager uh, Infester, I really like the tanks uh, a lot. Oh, but it's going to be not limited. again. The tanks aren't going to be the best option here. Kills off one Muta, loses all the Marines in the main base. Medivacs unload with the Marines, but they know to do it from a safe distance because Bioice went ham on those Medivacs last time. He tried oh. to unload on top of them. And, uh, you just, just escape on out of there. Oh, okay, nice stim forward. He has a nice little flank over here. Muta's having a hard time, but 
Biowise finds a nice angle and he escapes out of there with his life. Gonna find even more damage on these SCVs. Oh, this is ridiculous, yo. And he is gonna be able to get more. Okay. Oh. Killing that armor, he had healed an SCV that uh, was building an armory there. So 2-2 two -two is delayed by quite a bit of time oh, here. He's not even restarting that armory. It's still nope. just sitting at like 80% right now. And that really hurts. I mean, I guess he's spending most of his money on more SCVs to get them back. But you still would like to be starting those upgrades. I mean, if, if you're going to be behind in most of these ways, then at least mm -hmm. try to stay in ahead of the curve uh, when it comes down to, like, upgrades here. But Bioice is going to be taking that lead as his 2-2 has already been started. And his base is over there, too. He has a fourth. His drone count isn't crazy, but, I mean, for the situation, it's definitely at a it's, respectable account, right? Yeah, I think he had a bit of a bank for a while, but it looks like he's been able to spend it on that Ling Baneling flood as I imagine this is gonna be the big push in that he tries to end it with, with all of these Lings and all these Banelings and all of these Mutas. As Busters, he's kind of up against the ropes. He's lost so many workers. He's been able to reproduce them. But like you said, a lot of siege tanks uh, needs yeah. good focus fire on those Banelings, I yeah, guess. <laughs> yeah, if he could do that. Sure. Creeps, I mean, okay, so the thing going here for Buster is that Biowise's creep spread is not that great. Um, and mm -hmm. creep spread against uh, tank pushes are just, they can be so brutal because, like, if you have to stop your tank, oh man, this mutus met. <laughs> it hurts. Oh no. As a, even as a Zerg player, it's just. Like, I, know, I was going to say, you know, when a Zerg player is saying the mutus damage, it hurts against a Terran, like, you know, it's really bad, but. Oh, a lot of these mutas actually going down. They get a lot of damage done. Don't get me wrong, but uh, why does this have to be a bit careful about this? He doesn't want to lose too many of them. Yeah, he still needs a Minota to pick off tanks uh, when the push eventually comes here. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I'm a little bit surprised that the army value is so so similar here, despite how many workers have been killed. I mean, the workers killed is it's just. Just do it, man. Oh, uh, I can't even say it. It's, 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 a, it's a bit difficult. There's 63 SCVs that have died so far. And Buster's finally getting out a drop along the north side. The Ling's finding a few of those Marines, but not actually finding the drop itself. You know, the, the, the kind of glimmer of hope here for Buster is that Biolase keeps trading out for economy, but his army keeps getting bigger and bigger. And he's actually starting to push back these mutas, gets the Thors into a great spot. His army is still going to be cost efficient. So if Biolase just keeps trading out for workers, this is not going to necessarily going to be a 1A, just win the entire game with his army. The armor supplies are actually pretty even. So mm -hmm. Buster maxes out and so does Biolase. Buster can turn this around. Ooh. Yeah, no, I mean, with the creep spread not being that great, there could be that situation where Buster gets into position uh, with the tank push and Bioice isn't able to reinforce quickly enough after trading out uh, since his army is going to be a bit smaller. But it has to be now. He's able though. to just make almost all of his links into Banelings if he really wants to. I mean, oh God, that's a scary this is thought. The point we were talking about. Here comes the push. 2 2 is done for Buster. And Hive Tech is being invested into. Well. So. If there's any time to do it, it's right now. So, Kwame, would you say that there is such a thing as too many Banelings? <laughs> uh, 74 my... is approaching that number. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, you wouldn't even care at this point. You know what I mean? Like, no flanks. He doesn't even care. He's just going on in it, A moving with the Banelings. There are so many Banelings that it, it, it's just is making the so many Banelings video on YouTube look like so little Banelings. I feel like Bioice is tabbed out right now, trying to yeah. find the so many Banelings video <laughs> as he takes the 2-0 in a solid, clean sweep and is able to secure himself the 11th place spot in the seating for the final bracket, or at least at least 11th. Mm -hmm. It actually could be better depending on how the other players do because uh, he did secure himself two points now for the 2-0. Um, and if any other players end up going uh, sorry i should say if jig doesn't end up winning any of his matches mm -hmm. i think that he will still be at two points john or a puck also is only at two points so by also be tied with him 
And there's always the potential that Suppy also does not end up winning any games. Actually, Semper yeah. is also at two points. So, you know what? Yeah, there's still enough. good company there. Yeah, that Semper is there too. So, not, not to feel bad at all right here uh, as Buster, but. Yeah, man, that was uh, Biowise definitely at his best. Loving his ZVT when uh, he gets those run buys going. And just, I mean, even the opener was really weird. Like, it was, uh, I thought it was just going to be some kind of weird roach push that I've seen some Zerg players do uh, into a droning. But it literally was just like a, you know, pretty sick hold out of Buster, even though he lost a lot. Yeah, it ended up being it was a very really uh, difficult to come back from that. But, mm -hmm. well. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be our final match for the night. So thank you all so much for tuning in and uh, hanging with us for this amazing broadcast. And of course, if you guys enjoyed today's broadcast, do consider following the channel because, man, have we got a day for you tomorrow. And I, I say we, but tempo, my heart, my heart, it hurts. I'm not going to be joining you tomorrow. Oh, as I, uh, no. I unfortunately got some other stuff I got to do. But, man, it is such a good lineup that my heart, it, it pains me knowing i'm gonna miss I'll matches as amazing as scarlet versus masa possibly one of the hypest matches uh, mm -hmm. that we're gonna have from these kind of i'll take your pain games. and i'll channel it my man and peely we'll versus neeb also another really awesome match mm -hmm. uh peely peely a very very solid player and while i know a lot of people would just give huge favoritism to neeb we have seen that uh, versus Puff, Neve ended up losing one of his games and even actually got close to losing game number three versus Puck. He almost lost to Puck 1-2 uh, yeah. in that first week. So there's there's a lot of potential there for Peely to make something happen. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it too. Um, I'm, I am sad that you're not going to be there, but it is what it is, yeah. right? Um, today was great, you know. Uh, like I said, at first, I'm like, oh, I'm not having a good day, man. My car wouldn't start. I had to walk home oh, from work. God. It was like 9.30. I thought I was going to get like attacked by a rabbit. No, it was like 8 or something. And I thought I was going to get attacked by a wild rabbit. <laughs> rabbits are scary, man. I'm always afraid that I'm going to get into I a skunk. I do fear rabbits at night. Yeah, man. They're crazy. <laughs> you know, you ever seen Donnie Darko, yo? It's crazy. Oh, God. The rabid rabbits, man. Yep. Rabid rabbits. But, uh... Hopefully you guys did enjoy the broadcast. And of course, if you did, be sure to check out our wonderful sponsors that make Kings of the North possible. We have, of course, chairs for gaming. You guys should go check it out. And of course, uh, if you guys like these DX Racer chairs, then you can find some of those the DX Racer chairs over on the Chairs for Gaming website. If you use the uh, promo code, I believe it is, uh, what was it, KOTN? It is KOTN4, yep. Four. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you can get a bit of a discount also on the chairs there, but... Of course, also big shout out to Asus ROG. They provide all kinds of wonderful hardware. I have an Asus laptop. Got absolutely no complaints on it. Just took it to uh, WCS Montreal. I was using it yeah. for editing, playing games, all kinds of fun stuff. And it works great. Uh, they also provide all kinds of other hardware for PCs. So be sure to check them out. Indeed. And last but not least, of course, Match Arena. You guys would uh, be so kind to add to the prize pool for these players. And if you don't have money to do so, you can always use the code. I believe it is uh, K O T N. Oh, K O T N four. Okay, so the code, the code for universal is that code. No, the code for um, Chairs for Gaming is actually ES Champ. Is ES Champ, and then the code for the Match Arena is K O T N four. So awesome. just making sure, yeah, I forgot <laughs> about that one. Yeah. But of course, uh, be sure to check them out. And we got some really good goodies over there as well as a wonderful fourth or a tier to hire a fourth commentator or a third commentator. I actually forget the number now. Um, I know. But we have an extra commentator that will be hired for Kings of the North. If you uh, manage, if we manage to reach that goal for that match arena page, so be sure to check it out. Very, very excited for that. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, the match arena is actually at $179 already. So I'd love to see that just continue to rise up. We got all kinds of great stuff. An interview couch as well for $2,000 if we manage to raise that much. Uh, we got, I think, some the StarCraft Remastered Brawl. We got a video competition. Really, really cool goals. So be sure yeah, to check it out. Definitely. That's going to be it, right? Uh, so tomorrow, guys, um, hope you guys are ready for that. Today was a great day of games, and best of luck to uh, – well, is tomorrow the final day of uh, the Swiss? 
Tomorrow is our final day of the Swiss bracket. Starting mm-hmm. next week, starting next Tuesday, we are going to be going into the playoffs. So that's going to be a very exciting thing. And that's going to be where suddenly it's no longer, oh, okay, you know, I'm doing okay. And <laughs> you got to bring it in the final bracket. Yeah, it's it, this is actually where it starts getting to do or die. Do you make it to the offline finals? Because losing games there, uh, there's there's no coming back later on unless you're in the winner's bracket. But even then, you only got one life there. People in the loser's bracket, one game away from being eliminated from Kings of the North. So a lot mm-hmm. on the line there. Indeed. So until we meet again, ladies and gentlemen, it will be tomorrow at 8.30 uh, Eastern. I'm Temple. Joining Fear Dragon today, Joe was wonderful on production as well as observing. So definitely show him some love if you haven't already. ES Champ, of course, for putting it all together. And then our wonderful sponsors that we did already shout out. But mm-hmm. definitely don't forget to check them out. So And big I thank think, you to uh, Nathaniel for that host, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yo, Nate. Wow. All right. But uh, have a wonderful, wonderful night, guys. And we'll see you guys.